With Threadripper actually launching today, I feel it's time to do a Threadripper build, or at least a parts list here, and show you just how much money you might be ponying up if you're planning on building a really awesome Threadripper workstation featuring the 1950X. Let's go. Now before we begin here, I feel like it's important to point out that this is not a PC I would recommend you buying yourself and putting together, uh, because if you're a gamer, then there are much cheaper options out there for gaming that will give you equivalent, if not much better performance, depending on uh, how you spend your money. And likewise, if you are looking for a workstation PC, there are options out there that are far cheaper that will likely get the job done unless you're doing the heaviest of tasks. That being said, it's always nice to look at a very overkill PC and look at the possibility of being able to afford it because the price tag, while very expensive, is not, you know, by any means the craziest price tag we've seen on any other systems. So here's the parts list for a Threadripper PC in case you're looking to build on the TR4 platform. And of course, we're gonna start out with the Ryzen Threadripper processor, the 1950X at $999.99, so a $1,000 processor, giving us 16 cores and 32 threads at 3.4 gigahertz. Now, I suspect because of the way the processor die is structured that as long as you give uh, plenty of adequate cooling, which I think we are in this particular build, then you should be able to push that uh, clock speed up at least towards the 3.8, maybe even 3.9, and if you have a very robust cooling system, you may be even still able to hit 4.0 gigahertz. Now, the reason Threadripper should still be able to hit somewhat high clock speeds comparatively to the R7, R5, and R3 lines from AMD is the way the processor is structured. Essentially, we see uh, four... 1800X is sort of strapped together with half the cores disabled. So if you look at the dies there, it looks almost like four individual dies, and each one of those has four cores enabled, and it also has four cores disabled. Now that's very different than the way the 7900X is structured, where all the heat is going to be centered in one mass. Whereas if we flip back over to the 1950X deleted, that heat from all those cores is going to be a little bit more spread out on top of the fact that the chip itself is physically bigger from the 1950X. So one would think anyway, even adding on top of that, the fact that uh, AMD is soldering their IHS to the actual dies. So you would think that heat is handled a little bit better on the 1950X and the 1920X from AMD than the uh, new i9 processors from Intel. And because of that, I would think we can keep thermals still somewhat under control and get those higher clock speeds. And moving on to our cooler, we're actually going with somewhat of a budget option in the way of 360 millimeter rads. And that is the Arctic Cooling uh, 360 millimeter AIO for $120. And I'm hoping, and I hopefully will someday get my hands on a 1950X to try out myself, but I'm hoping that a 360 millimeter rad uh, would be able to keep the processor cool and at least get to 3.9 gigahertz, if not 4.0. Moving on to our motherboard, I'm picking the MSI X399. Now, if you do go with this motherboard, be aware that it is launching the 16th of August, so it won't be on release day for the Threadripper processor. There are some other boards available on launch day in case you really need a board now, but this board has really good aesthetics. Looks like it gives us some RGB goodness, but also I really have been impressed in the past with MSI's uh, UEFI BIOS uh, more than some of the other budget options that are available in this price range. Some notable features of this MSI board include eight DIMM slots for RAM. That's to be expected with quad channel RAM, but we also have what looks like uh, two 8-pin EPS connectors as well as three M.2 uh, slots on the front side of the motherboard. It's also worth pointing out that there is a Wi-Fi card included with this motherboard, which while not really a huge cost-saving measure, uh, for somebody buying this motherboard is a nice inclusion from MSI. Moving on to RAM, there's only really one choice in my mind for RGB RAM, and that's gonna be Trident Z. We have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3000 megahertz. Uh, with uh, this 1950X, I would expect that it could hit that uh, 2933 megahertz on the RAM without a problem, and it, who knows, maybe you get well-bend RAM and you can actually overclock the RAM a little bit further than that. But uh, four six of this, which does give you an upgrade path 
as well because you still do have uh, four DIMM slots available in case you want to double your RAM down the road. For our drives, we're actually not taking advantage of our M.2 slots, mostly as a cost-saving measure. Uh, I do believe it is essential though to have an SSD of some sort and the SanDisk Ultra 2 480 gigabyte SATA 3 drive here is one of the cheaper options for 480 gigabytes of SSD space, at least right now on the market. And of course, we'll add some mass storage here with the one terabyte uh, WD Blue drive, very reliable drive uh, from Western Digital and $50 is still a very good value for this type of drive. For our GPU, in case you're planning on using this computer for gaming, we have an EVGA GTX 1080 Ti. This is the SC2 edition. Um, however, this is one of those parts, if you were sort of using this as a base for your build, this parts list as a base, then if you're not a gamer, this would be one of the components that you can definitely save a lot of money on and just go with something that'll give you a video output because again, the 1950X does not have any onboard video of any kind, but you could pair it with something much cheaper than a $750 graphics card. For our case, we have the Fractal Design Define S. This is a case with water cooling in mind and I actually own one. In fact, it's uh, right there. So you can sort of see it back there if you look in the, uh, you know, the little webcam sort of picture. It's you know, a little guy right there. Now for Threadripper, the thing I love about this uh, PC case is how flexible the water cooling is. If you look here, in the front side of things, you can handle up to a 360 millimeter rad. And on the top, you can actually handle a 420 millimeter rad. Now if you're handling uh, radiators on both the front and the top, then you can't put a 360 and a 420 in because they would uh, sort of clash there. So you might have to do like a 280 on the front and then a 420 on the top. But you can also even, depending on again on your alignment, you can even fit a radiator in the exhaust of the case as well. And although the motherboard side of the PC is definitely geared towards water cooling as well as having plenty of mounting for um, custom water loops, uh, both the reservoir and the pumps, the backside is actually all business. You have here three three and a half inch drive caddies where you can mount your full sized uh, hard drives. You have an addition to that, two more two and a half inch drive bays for SSDs, giving you a total expansion of standard uh, drives. You'd have three hard drives and two SSDs or some variant of that. And that gives you a lot of expandability, even though it looks very clean on the front side of things. And even if that's not enough drive expansion for you, again, our motherboard carries with it as well, three M.2 slots, which you can utilize for uh, NVMe drives as well. So you should have plenty of expansion available with the Define S as your case. Last but certainly not least is the power supply. And I do recommend a very large power supply for this uh, type of PC build. And I'm going to go with the Corsair RMI series, uh, the RM1000i, which is an 80 plus gold certified power supply. In addition to being fully modular, the 1000 watts does allow us some upgrade paths down the road with our Threadripper system, whether we want to add in another GPU down the road, which with 64 PCIe lanes, that definitely is an option with the 1950X. The power supply in general just gives us a lot of options, more so than a slightly smaller power supply might. So there's our system. We have the Threadripper 1950X at the heart along with a 1080 Ti from EVGA and the grand total for this PC build is going to come in just shy of $3,000. However, after taxes in most places, I imagine that your uh, grand total would actually end up being over the $3,000 mark. So here's where I'm a little bit curious. For those of you that are planning to build a Threadripper system or hoping to build a Threadripper system, go ahead and let us know in the comments down below what specs you're hoping to build out. And even better yet, give us a PC part picker list so we can sort of see what you're building out with this new platform. And it's worth noting if you are planning to build one of these, all the links to the items that I discussed in this video are down below in case you wanna check out individual components. If you like this video, give it a like, a share, subscribe, comment, all those things help out down below. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They're the same tag for your convenience. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel around me for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.